Ich habe auch alles rein. You know, they say when you're nervous, just picture everybody in the audience naked. I can't do that because I can't see you. <laughs> For this story, let's go back a few years. Dear Mr. Cyril Jr. Dim, they misspelled my name. <laughs> We are glad that you submitted your application for acceptance into our university. It brings us joy to know you hold our university in such high esteem. It's looking good so far. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> we regret to inform you that we will not be accepting your application. The competition this year was so stiff, and we encourage you to try again, possibly in the future. Yours truly, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Ooh. Push forward a few weeks. Dear Mr. Cyril Jr. Tim, they got the name right this time. <laughs> We took a look at your application, and we will not be accepting you. Thank you for your interest. At least MIT softened the blow. <laughs> One more. Dear Mr. Dim, it's got a good ring to it. We reviewed your application for the MasterCard scholarship. But unfortunately, we have decided to give the scholarship to somebody else. <laughs> Yours truly, the University of Toronto. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I have been told all my life I am cocky. But in this instance, I did not feel particularly cocky. I felt desperate. Raise your hand if you've ever felt desperate. Thank you. You see, we have many beginnings in life. The very first beginning is when you're born. You have very little control over that. The next beginning is primary school, maybe kindergarten. You have very little control over that too. High school, well, moderate control. But college, the ball is in your court. And I felt I was stuck. Three times I had tried and three times I had been told no. And so I did the next logical thing. I stopped looking at the Americas. <laughs> I turned my head to Europe. Because what had happened essentially, I don't know if you've noticed this, MIT had just said, Cyril, it's not you, it's me. <laughs> UBC had looked at me and said, Cyril, you're not our type. And Toronto had said, Cyril, we like somebody else. <laughs> so I went and I applied to the University of Vienna in Austria, and guess what? The Germans said yes. <laughs> there I was, applying for the visa. I was so excited. It's Vienna, the city of music. It's so alive. But the immigration office, they took one look at me and said, Nine, <laughs> you will not have a place in our university. <laughs> in this case, it was as if the University of Vienna's dad said, no, you can't have my daughter. <laughs> Again, I felt desperate. And so, I got humble. Or so I think. I turned my head to Poland. <laughs> Poland said, hmm, okay, we'll give you a place at our university. Fine. I went into the embassy, the Polish embassy. I said, you know, I need a visa. And they asked me the weirdest question. How soon do you want it? <laughs> I said, uh, a week? We'll give it to you in four days. <laughs> in four days, I was holding a visa, I had the plane tickets, and my beginning was finally coming together. Except for one thing. Once the plane left the ground, I had no idea how to get anywhere. 
So this was me praying not to get lost when we landed in Lusaka, Zambia, which is next door to my country, by the way. I was praying that I wouldn't get lost when we landed in Dubai. Well, at least I was hoping to get lost in Dubai. And finally, when we got to Warsaw, there I was, fascinated in a new country with absolutely no idea how I was going to survive. <laughs> the beauty of my story is that right there on the plane, the air hostess walked up to me. Now, this is Emirates. I thought she was hitting on me. <laughs> but no, she turned out to be Zimbabwean, so she was not hitting on me. We landed, and somehow there were more Zimbabweans at the airport. It was like they were waiting for us. That was my first lesson in how to use the bus. It was my first lesson in how to buy tickets. It was my first lesson in how to elude those people who check the tickets. <laughs> in the end, my greatest memory of starting this new beginning is not in how I got denied so many times, but it is in how I fell in love with the place when I finally got to know the place. Remember earlier on I said I got humble when I chose Poland? That is the biggest lie I've ever told. I met Polish people. Aww. I met pierogi. <laughs> Who cannot fall in love with that? And the biggest lesson for me thus far is that beginnings can have many shapes and forms. Do you remember the speech earlier on where the beginning was so easy? It's a possibility. Do you remember the beginning that was so romantic? It's a possibility. Do you remember that beginning that was so sentimental? It's a possibility. Will you remember my beginning that was so difficult and wrought with denial? It's a possibility. One way or the other, the beginning will be significant. So whatever beginning you embrace as you leave this storytelling event, make it significant. Dear MIT, <laughs> I understand now why you denied me. I can barely survive university here. I can only imagine what it would have been like there. Dear UBC, I have nothing to say to you. <laughs> Dear University of Toronto, Toronto is too cold for me anyway. <laughs> Dear Vienna, specifically the immigration office. <laughs> Here in Poland, I met Ujan Wojewódzki. Please help me. <laughs> <laughs> and dear ladies and gentlemen, whatever beginning you have, may it be special. Thank you.